Hi everyone, welcome to another Friday PM. Guys, Friday PM! Oh, oh, oh. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Let's text about it! Let's text about it. <laughs> no, no texting. Come on. Well, you're very welcome. We kind of thought it'd make you smile a little bit. Because um, guess what we're going to talk about today? Phone usage and how to use wisdom and all we need to use our phones correctly, to use time management correctly and a lot of other things that we're going to talk about. So you're very welcome wherever you're joining us from. So put away your phone. Everyone's phone, did we put our phone? Okay, so put away your phones. <laughs> anything that can distract you, okay? unless if you're watching on your phone, that might not be a good idea. But anything else that can distract you and uh, we're so happy that you can join us. Anyone watching us for a very first time, you are very, very welcome. And we hope that you can enjoy all the other Friday PMs as well with us. So in the studio, I'm very honored today to have uh, three very distinguished guests. And they're all from the millennial generation. The millennials are, he are, are, are in town. The millennials are in the studio. And we just thank the Lord for them. And basically, we're following up from last week because there was so much to discuss. And we, we realized that there are some topics that were not covered and talked about. It's such an important topic, isn't it? We're all involved with technology. We all need our phones, need our devices nowadays. Very few people now, doesn't matter what level of society you're in or in what profession you're in or what you do, most of us do use our devices. So it's a reality and something that we need to deal with, talk about and see how God can give us wisdom using it and so that we can edify Him in all that we do. So praise the Lord. So we're going to talk about it, guys, and see how it goes. And once again, we're not sharing because we know it all. We definitely don't. But we're going to share a little bit of our experience that we think can help a little. And then also maybe one or two things that we're finding we're struggling with ourselves that we're trusting the Lord to help us with. So first of all, guys, welcome. Welcome. So Thank good you. to have you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you Great for joining us. Good, good, wonderful. We're going to talk about time management first of all, guys, because especially in your generation, but it's kind of across the board now. We see so many people busy, busy on their devices and our phones. What can help us to manage our time correctly on our phones? So it's a quite a complex uh, question you ask here because there are many devices on our devices to help us with that. There are many apps you can download, you can Google that they can help you with managing your time on your device. Uh, they can even override the system settings and uh, block your phone literally after some amount of hours you can set and even after restarting your phone you won't be able to unlock this so there are apps that can work quite severely like that but on the first note how you can how you can check how much uh, time you've been on your phone through the day throughout the week there is uh, on modern smartphones there is an option to do that I don't know about the older generation of smartphones but on Apple I believe it's called screen time you can uh, go to iPhone and in the options you can you can go to screen time find that uh, part and it will tell you exactly how much time you spend on your on your apps on different apps throughout your week and also on Android there is uh, it can it can vary it can be called screen time screen time management depending on the on the mark on the brand but it can give you uh, great details on how long you've spent your time on different apps so you can see yourself uh, like your time management throughout the week and you can adjust it from there okay. so yeah. to take it from a different perspective what helps me sometimes is to check the purpose of why am i on my phone because of course if it's for work if i'm using it to do actually something productive then then that's all right but many times i realize that i do it as a form of rest and it's times when I've had a full day of doing something and then I finally want to just sit down and relax. And the easiest thing is to just pick up my phone and start scrolling and in that way I relax. There are other things I could have been doing, but because I just feel tired, that's the easiest option. So I think what does help is to find some enjoyable ways how to rest. Things that you don't feel pressure have to do this or, you know, I have to now do something productive, but something that will help you just relax that's different than your phone and for me personally that helps with at those times oh excellent Kate 
Very good. I think yeah, the reason why you're on it is very important. As you say, to almost check yourself, right? Yeah. And, and like you said, you know, sometimes we go to that place looking for a form of rest. And I find that interesting because it is, it's almost like when you want to relax, what's the first thing that happens? You pull out your phone. And each time you tap something or swipe something, you get a hit of dopamine every single time you do it. When you're on your, your messages, when you're on your Facebook, it's a hit of dopamine. So it's really, really deceptive. It can really feel like you're relaxing, mm -hmm. but your body is still physically processing all of that information. Yes, Zach, good point. And Kate, your reason too, because I, I've caught myself at once or twice where, you know, it's not that you want to know what people say, but you're just like, yes, I've got nothing to do, so I'll just chat to people. Why am I doing it? Do I want to feel good about myself? Do I want someone, do I want to share something that someone, that someone can uh, like what I've done and say, oh, that was so good, oh, I loved so much. It's nice to share the joy. Okay, it's part of our lives. I'm holding the thing right now for my notes, but we need it, but it cannot be uh, the reason, uh, or let me say it rather, um, the reason why we do it uh, must be pure. We must ask the Lord, what is the reason why I'm using it. It cannot be a substitute for something else that we should rather be doing. Yeah, yeah I realize that in real life it's much easier to realize I'm not doing things for my glory but I want to do it for God's glory. But on social media it is so easy to slip to the other side because anytime I post a picture of myself or I say something clever, why am I doing it? I'm doing it to look good in front of people. And I think on social media especially we have to keep that in mind that we're here to build his kingdom and not our own and yeah I think there it's more tricky than in actual life yeah and because I mean you can also portray an image online right mm -hmm. you can be someone on a device that you are not in real life that's something you're touching on that's very important because I can be I can be upbeat and really clever and going through a really good time on my phone where in real life I'm actually quite depressed <laughs> and you can be a woo it's a great of being having such a nice time but there's no accountability is there mm. there's an amount of uh, double standard when it comes to social media and um, I watched the other day uh, a short video about some teenage uh, kids talking about their uh, life in social media on social media platforms and some of them have uh, two accounts one account is for uh, public viewership where there's sort of this idealistic way they can present themselves mm -hmm. because this is what the society nowadays, the environment, schools and their, uh, and their friends uh, sort of require. <laughs> uh, the level of expectation is so high now for the kids and for everyone on social media on that matter. Mm -hmm. So they have this one account for uh, public PR and everything and they have these other accounts that is quite casual slack you know, uh, for them being just themselves. Some of them do that, but uh, this form of expectation from the environment nowadays and the pressure that uh, is put on, on people is enormous. So it's really tough to find the balance between who am I in real life and who am I out there on social platform where everything is virtual and uh, people don't see you real time, what you look like in front of the screen, just you can create whatever character you want to be out there for people to see and mm. it's not necessarily who you are really, really. Yeah. yeah yeah which is so dangerous because if like like kate was saying you know in her life in in our own lives in real life we find it easy to you know we want to live for god's glory and then online it's like sometimes the temptation is to have that alter ego not an alter ego in like a dr jekyll and mr hyde kind of thing but just in a way you want to present yourself you got a public persona that you want to give out. But if we're made to be image bearers of God, mm. if that's our calling as Christians, you know, is to say like, here I am for the glory of God, here I am bearing God's image, mm. then shouldn't that kind of translate through? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then the, uh, uh, together with that, Zach, is also, um, for me, there's such maintenance involved. Yeah. Mm. You can't take one person, that person can suck you dry, man. That person can take you to town. If it's the wrong person at the wrong time, if God hasn't said to you, contact that person. Hmm. Isn't that, don't you guys find it's maintenance sometimes, having to keep in touch all the time? And then the guilt that comes if you don't. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's true. That's, <laughs> that's true. Like <laughs> <laughs> a guilty yeah. little giggle, yeah. <laughs> like I know. There are many friends that could tell you how bad I am at keeping in touch, and it, it can be draining, even if it's people you love spending time with in real life. Sometimes just to have to answer questions or, you know, say how you're doing, it, it takes a lot out of you. And yeah. just to continue from Christopher saying, I think it's so much easier to keep this perfect image online than yeah. in real life and to pursue being perfect because it, it doesn't, it's not that hard. You can, you know, put a filter on your picture or you can just copy somebody else's quote or what they said and suddenly, you know, you're this beautiful, intelligent person. But usually the things... yourself from all different angles yes. and just... Choose the right one. Green screen behind Eiffel Tower and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So to actually do it in real life is much harder, but many times the harder way is the right way and the effort that we put into looking perfect online could be used for building it here in the reality and spending time with God and actually, you know, trying to be better in what matters. Yeah. Uh, coming back a little bit to, to time management and to manage, to manage this, um, to, you know, to maintain this kind of persona, it takes upkeep. Mm. Whatever you, you, you manipulate, you have to maintain. Mm. If you manipulate something, if it's not God ordained, you know, when something's of God, yes, we have normal struggles every day, but if, if the Lord is in something, it's always a mutual blessing, isn't it? The person blesses you, you send a message of encouragement, there's life, there's light. Um, as soon as the person, if you, you don't have contact with them anymore, it's okay, you don't feel guilt, whatever, you just know that person knows where you're at. Um, but as soon as you ma manipulate something, oh, the maintenance is just terrible. It's just terrible. To talk about time, I don't know about you guys, but for me, the struggle that I have is to make almost like a time in my day where I know this is my time for my family, to spend time with my son, to have quality time, is to find a time where this thing, where I'm no longer available. Now, yeah. if there's an emergency situation or we need it, I mean, we need this device. We need to keep in touch with people. It's important we keep in touch with our families. We use it for ministry. We organize. I mean, a lot of my work that I do personally is on here. But it's just to find that discipline to say, at the, maybe at this time of night, I really, really, unless it's not definitely urgent, I'm going to put my phone somewhere else that I'm not even tempted to, to, to pick it up. Yeah. Am I the only one? <laughs> <laughs> and also on the, on the, on the media, it's uh, it, it, this nice quote, the, there was this uh, short commercial about uh, behaving well online, because like we said, the online you can do whatever and it's... Uh, um, you're not looking into other people's face, so you can just like there is a safety net that uh, you know face to face you wouldn't necessarily say certain things to certain people. But the ad was saying that online don't be rude, be yourself. Unless you're rude, just be someone else. <laughs> <laughs> online, uh, Christopher, you've always find uh, you've you've shared personally of how you've learned also at certain times not to be tempted when you're tired. You wanted to share about that, I think. Well, as for as for a single man, for everyone on that matter, you know, we have we have on our devices uh, instant access, like I was saying last time, to the internet, to the world wide web, in the palm of our hands, so we can research everything, good and bad. So especially especially at nine times, if you are alone, if I am alone, uh, as a single guy, obviously there are temptations online and you have to you have to go to the lord and as a christians we have the strength from god to uh to protect ourselves and also bible says uh, that the one who's born of god keeps himself and and the wicked one doesn't touch him or something like that so it, it is huge responsibility on us i believe we have friends also to help us but on ourselves to keep ourselves from the wrong images, from wrong content, from uh, filthy content, from uh, vulgar or or um, just just bad stuff, whatever is on the internet. It's so easy to go everywhere, honestly, and um, we have to really protect our eyes, protect our minds, and really pray uh, to God to help us guard our our minds, our hearts, and uh, yeah, especially. Yeah, when you're tired, when you're frustrated, when you're annoyed, and you look for yeah. um, stuff to just offload your uh, your anger, your your mind. I like to eat, for example. 
<laughs> I love food. I won't, I won't you know, lie to you, but uh, you're not the only one. Don't worry. <laughs> so there is some comfort, you know, when when you're when you're mad, when you uh, when you're in an argument with your friend or with your spouse, whoever. You know, there is comfort you're seeking sometimes after after a huge blow up, you know. So as Christians, we have to really seek this uh, this comfort in the Lord. And uh, sometimes it's uh, not easy, but it's it's necessary and it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Christoph, if you just go back to your phone, of course, just to add to what you're saying is you don't have that one on one with the Lord anymore. You can't take it to him and say, Lord, can you deal with this? Can you help me? And I think many times it's almost like sometimes I feel the Lord's waiting for me. Like, come on, you know, I want to spend time with you. When are you going to give me your all in all? When are you going to give me your fullest attention without getting distracted and um, I even see sometimes with my son, you know, there's something coming in. He's like, come on, dad, you know, come on, you know, we're, we're doing this thing. You don't get distracted. And I have to say, all right, all right, you know, put the thing down, you know, this is important. No, okay, I'll deal with that later. So for me, what I find is I have to discern and ask God to help me to discern, may I add, is to say, is this something important for right here, right now? Yeah. Or can I leave this tomorrow when I'm alone, when I'm in a better frame of mind, when I'm not tired, when I'm in my workplace? So that's what I'm asking the Lord to help me with, is just to discern the time. Because if I see something I need to attend to, my natural instinct is just to deal with it quickly so that it's done. But I need to think, well, tomorrow is another day. If I can wait for tomorrow, I just need to let it ride. Say, so, Lord, you'll give me the grace. That person will understand, for example. Um, so that's something that I'm really uh, working on myself. Then also to, to contribute to that also. Uh, when, when I was growing up, um, my parents always told me that, that some, if I wanted something now quickly, it's, it's, it's not a rabbit, it won't run away, you know, uh, we have a <laughs> saying. So, if especially online, and uh, if, if that's a movie, it, it, it helps me recently actually, that this, this mindset that whatever I want to like watch in the evening, YouTube, Netflix, whatever it is, and, and I'm tired, and I think to myself, it's, it's important to get sleep, and Whatever I want to watch, it's it's going to be there tomorrow and next week and probably next year even. Yeah. So there is no rush and and it's so tough. Uh, you know, get this mindset that whatever you want to have, especially online now, there is everything there, and most of the stuff is going to stay there forever probably. So it won't go away. We can wait uh, one day, and it just it just peace of mind. It gives a nice peace. Mm. I find that I, I do that with the wrong things. I'm like, I've got chores to do. I'll put them off till tomorrow. <laughs> and then, but this everybody, video, everybody. this video right now, I gotta see. It. It's so important. It's so important. It's what, would the, what would the world come to if I don't watch this now? But that must be also why they started doing the 24-hour stories because that's how they get you. That they, you know, you know, it's not gonna be there tomorrow. Yeah. So that I think is is a little. The tricky. urgency. Yeah, there's a scarcity, sense yeah. of scarcity, yeah, urgency. Yeah. 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 But of course, we're not going to miss anything if we don't see it for one day. No. But I think it's also important to notice what are we looking at. Like when I was saying before, when I'm tired, I just scroll to pick wisely the people we follow. Because if it's maybe just pictures of nature and verses or quotes, then that's great. But if somebody puts stuff that we may not agree with and we feel like, all right, you know, I know how it's right. I know what it says in the Bible. But if you keep seeing something again and again and again, mm. especially when you're tired, you don't really notice it, but it keeps going in your mind and that that's not good. And it's important sometimes to make the decision, okay, I like this person, he's my friend, or she's my friend, but what they're posting is not good. I don't want to let these things to go into yeah. me, so I'm going to unfollow them and I'm, I don't want to be taking this, these things in. Yeah, you know, excellent, Kate. Excellent, excellent point. Moving on to meal times, guys. Our meal times are fun. <laughs> if you ever run a wine song table around meal times, it's there's, there's never a dull moment, I think. But um, just we won't stand it long. But I think just like to consider meal times, especially in times of fellowship, yeah. we have we really try, don't we? I mean, we try, don't we? I mean, don't, we? <laughs> don't we try, guys? Yes, we try. We, try. <laughs> we wait till dinner to show each other videos. No, we don't. We put our no, it's true. It's true. It's but it's what you said about um, time spending with Ruben as well. And the same thing that Hillary and Carol spoke about when they were on Friday PM mm -hmm. was that when it's when, you know, C Carol said to Hillary, when you come home at five o'clock, leave work at, with work, 
and now you're home. Mm-hmm. The same thing that you said with Ruben, you know, you leave, you leave those things to be, this is the time spent with Ruben, you, you know, this is your son. And then, but it's the same way at, at mealtime. It's like, hey, this is time for us to have fellowship, for us yeah. to eat together. And there's like blocks in your day that you can say, you know, I don't need a phone for this because yeah. I, I need to be more mm-hmm. present with the people that I'm here with. Yes. Mm-hmm. You mentioned before um, something that really caught your attention was how quickly when we receive messages, how it's quickly just to pass it on, especially when it's got to slandering someone. Yeah. And you brought that up yesterday. Well, I myself have been guilty many times. You know, you, you get some information and then you're like, I've got to share this with people. Like, I can't believe, do they know? Do they know what I've just found out? You know, and you're like, it gets you in this kind of, and you just quickly, you know, send it on before looking at, you know, where's, who's the author? Where's it from? What's the source? What's the content? You know, what's, what's even the, the kind of the tone behind the content? You know, is it, is it really non-biased? Is it, is it really objective? Or are they starting to slide in opinions? Like, is it something that you really need to be passing on? And if it's not, then, you know, like you said, is, is to, just to wait and, and, and in, in the last Friday PM to, to talk about, maybe I should share this with somebody to check it before I send it on. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's just easy, isn't it? So easy. And you, 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 also, what's my motive? Yeah. You talked about motive. What's my motive? Oh, I wanna, I wanna sound like I'm informed. I wanna inform you. Yes. Mm. It's, it's, I mean, we're, we're, all, we're all guilty. I'm guilty, I've done it once or twice. Uh, so yeah, we need to. I think ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do with this thing? Yeah. You know, I, sometimes it, it's terrible when you receive the information because you didn't ask for it, but you just have it, and you have to now be confronted with confronting it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's not not always a, a, a easy place to be, and fact checking is important, Zach. Yeah. Definitely to fact check things. Um, we're going to talk quickly about keyboard. Zach, you talked about that. What's it called? Keyboard. Key, we, we we call them keyboard warriors. And it's, what is what is keyboard warriors? Because I've never heard of it. So explain what it means. It's like Dutch courage, but with a keyboard. <laughs> you suddenly get very What's Dutch courage. You no, know, you suddenly get very brave when you're behind a computer screen and a keyboard. And this this term came from um, like the role playing games that when when when, I, when we were young um, that you would go on. You'd have these massively multiplayer online games, and people would interact. And there's always harassment. There's always somebody, we call them trolls, because they act like little river trolls who hide under, live under bridges, and they, their only existence is to make other people miserable. Yeah. <laughs> and they act like that, and then the things that they type, it's like if you were to ever sit in a conversation, like I would never look at you, mm. even if I'm really, really mad, you know, I wouldn't look at you and say, you know, some of the most hateful and vehement things. You have a check when you're with somebody, even even if that's how you feel, you know your feelings aren't the truth, but even if that's how you feel, you're not going to express yourself that way, but when yeah. you're behind a keyboard, it makes it a little bit Because there's easier. no filter of that face. I can just write it and it goes into the air yeah. somewhere. And, and the, realize the impact of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And everything then, is diluted. When, when you communicate online and send those things, everything is like diluted and people are okay with that, you know? Quickly leads to, to gossip and slander. Mm. Yeah. No, because you can go, you can go further. Always, what I feel, why texting is so dangerous, is because you always go further mm. on your phone that you would ever go in real life, mm. whether it's confronting someone or asking something, or or quickly responding to them in a certain way, mm. and that's why it's so 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 dangerous. It's a it's a this device comes with so much responsibility. I think more than what I realize, more than what we realize, perhaps is how dangerous it can be. It can do a lot of good, uh, but Christoph also said earlier, there's a lot of danger involved. There's a dangerous side to it, because I've got access to the world from here. But it's just, uh, yeah, we've got to take responsibility and, and, and ask the Lord how to deal with it. I just want to, just a very quick story that I'm remembering now about um, just a personal shortcoming, that um, when, I, when I first got saved, I was living in a, in a fraternity house, basically, and my two roommates were both on the football team, big guys. One of them six foot six, you know, two meters tall, 300 pounds. The other guy was, you know, six foot four, 230 you know, pounds. Big, big guys. And um, one of my roommates just was an absolute pig. You know, he left his, we didn't have a dishwasher because his house was built in like the 70s. And he used to leave his dishes in the sink. 
And one day I was so fed up with it that I, I went to the kitchen just to make a sandwich and I saw these dishes again and he had gone out to do something. And I decided I'm going to let him have it. So on my phone, I quickly type up, 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 up. And I'm like, hey man, you know, this is en enough is enough. And then he sent me back a message and then the message I sent back was, you know, even more angry because he didn't get the point. And then he sent me back one that was even more angry because of, you know, what was going on. And soon enough, he's like, all right, man, I'll see you when we get home. And he came back into the house and flew into the kitchen. And we had a really aggressive confrontation in the, in the kitchen where I almost got in a, a physical fight with my roommate, a guy that I knew, loved, trusted, just because, you know, the dishes were in the sink. And we had gotten to this point over text message where we were both, we would have never done that in real life. Mm. We would have never done that face to face. Yeah, so you yeah. see, kids can be mean, especially at school when you, when you have... Uh, groups of kids and, and they tend to gossip and, and basically be mean to each other. Let's, let's face it, no, we had that at school, remember. And they speak to one another about what happened, some, some negative to one of the friends. And imagine giving them devices that they can uh, be connected instantaneously to 300 other people. And instead of gossiping one to another, they can gossip instantaneously to 300 people at the same time. And kids are committing suicide because of, because of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because of that. Well, on that note, we're going to watch a little video clip quickly that can help us a little further along. I'm talking about this text worrying, especially warriors uh, being a text warrior, is that right? Keyboard warrior. Keyboard warrior. Well, text it, it's a bit worrying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so have, this little, uh, uh, have a look at this little video clip and we'll be right back. Being the best version of yourself online. Respect and self-respect. Respect. That's a word we hear a lot. But what does it mean? Respect is all about understanding other people's feelings, wishes and rights. We may not agree with a person, or like what they say, or even like them, but we should always show them respect, both online and offline. It can be easy not to be respectful online. We might not see the person we're talking to, and so can't see how what we are saying affects them. This means that sometimes we feel like we can say or do things online that we wouldn't do if the person was with us. Our behaviour online should be no different to our offline self and should show the same level of respect. Self-respect. That's a term we hear a lot too. Self-respect is about being nice to yourself, being confident that you are behaving correctly and treating yourself well. Self-respect online is about thinking before pressing. Is what I am about to say online showing respect to myself? Am I treating myself well by doing it? If the answer to those questions is yes, you're probably okay. But if you have doubts, maybe it's a good idea not to press the button. By showing a little more self-respect, you're well on your way to being the best version of yourself online. Well, we hope you enjoyed that video clip. And before we end our time together, a final thought that we thought was so important to talk about is the fact that when we only get used to communicating with people on our phones, I feel that we really struggle to relate to people out there. It's almost like when we stop l looking really to people's facial expressions, to kind of see where they're at, to see if they have a need, to see am I hurting them, mm -hmm. uh, how do they feel today? You know, not like we always look to one another and you look out for it, but just to have that sensitivity. And I think that's lacking a lot because I don't know about you guys, but I've been walking on the street sometimes when I'm busy and I almost, almost, <laughs> I almost bump into people, never mind looking at their faces. <laughs> so that's my discipline too, is not to walk and text. Like I don't know if any one of you has ever walked into something, almost fallen down. I've done it <laughs> a few times. <laughs> but I think that's something to, to really keep in mind. Yeah, I think it's important that before we post or write anything on the internet, we must think and ask ourselves if we would say it to the person's face. If I was to say it, would I, would I still do it? Would I still want to write it? And if it's something public, then even more. Would I want the whole world to see what I'm just about to write now? Right now, right now. <laughs> would I want everybody yeah. to see it? Because anybody can access it. And as we know, it's hard to actually delete things from the internet. They'll always somehow stay around. So it's a good thing just to always check that. Well, and we just read that scripture that uh, that we all found quite daunting, isn't it? Where the Bible says, in the day of judgment, we'll have to give an account for every, what does that say? Careless word. Every careless mm -hmm. word spoken. And 
well, any careless word, I, I pretty much mean texting is probably as well. Every careless mm. word. Oh, Lord, help us. Mm. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord. But it's something to keep in mind that we say, Lord, we don't want to waste our words. And okay, not only sending it to someone, maybe even on a text message, but you don't know who's next to that person. That mm. person must, can get so upset telling it to someone else and they can do anything with it. Uh, so, yes, it's something very uh, important to learn from. Just a final thought from me is I was also thinking that sometimes we get so into our phones and our devices that, that we forget to relate to people sometimes. You know, when you go to the supermarket, for example, and if you just think about your phone and, 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 and all the people that's on there, it's almost like we cannot be in the present and seeing who's God, who, if, if God's putting a person right in front of us to say, Lord, Who's this person in front of me? There must be a reason why I'm shopping here, why I'm dealing with this person right now. And I've had it many times when the Holy Spirit prompts me and says, this person has got unbelievable sadness. They look so sad when I really look at them. I say, are you doing okay? Are you having a bad day? And then many, many times or most times, um, I'm able to share the goodness of Jesus to them and say, you know what? Jesus loves you and you've got to turn to Him and He'll be your strength. So we'll miss those moments. Uh, don't we? If, we? if we're not attentive to it, if we're just saying, well, if you're not in my circle, my phone circle, then I can't relate to you and I don't really want anything to do with you because you're not in my circle. And uh, I think that's very dangerous. I think we can lose, in, uh, we can lose touch with reality. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, a phone is, is supposed to complement your life and not your life is not supposed to complement your phone life. You know, you're, you're supposed to have yeah. Kind of the reality first, and then the digital is 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 a secondary. It's an it's addition. It makes it better. Yeah. Um, whereas some people, you know, the the great temptation I think now is we've got so many influencers, so many people who are traveling the world for a living, and they actually mm-hmm. make a living by posting photos on Instagram or Facebook, and they're, you know, not to dog anybody's career, but like you can so easily switch that 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 uh, switch can be flipped where you're thinking my whole life has to complement my Instagram. You know, I'm doing this, we say we do it for the gram and it's an expression um, that means, you know, they're just doing it for the camera mm. and you've got this whole now celebrity syndrome across everyday people because there's no sense of balance. Yeah. And, you know, I personally struggle with that, especially at university. Every photo, every night out was a photo op. You know, everybody wanted to show you know, what you were wearing, who you were with, what you were doing, everything was a big competition. And so, you know, once you see the kind of futility in it, and God showed me, among many other things, you know, the futility of it, but that was, you know, a big thing for me was to learn that your digital life just has to complement your real life, so that when you're, you don't lose your witness, you don't lose a chance to interact with a human being next to you, yeah. and for God to use you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we talked last week about AI, so, I mean, even that technology now, everything is so motorized and computerized, it's almost like it's designed to take the human element out in a way mm. where we even see a person next to a device and we almost treat them the same way at times. Yeah. We don't realize that that person might be going through hell at that moment. They might be in, addicted somehow. They might be about to divorce. They might be going through hell. They might be really, really needing the Lord right now, but they're also just putting up a front because they're at work. So yeah, I think it's time to pray um, that we can ask us the Lord to touch someone um, that's struggling in this area. And um, I think it's pretty much everyone that has a, a phone or device, we all just need the Lord, don't we? We need the Lord to touch us afresh, give us new revelation, new wisdom in these different areas. I'm going to ask Kate just to pray for us now and just to pray for someone out there who really needs this prayer today. Yes, Lord, we just want to tell you that we need you. We need you in our everyday life. We need you in every single thing that we do. We ask for your wisdom, especially when we use our phones or our computers when we're online. We pray that you would just help us to discern what is right, what is wrong for us to do, for how to spend our time, but also what to say, what to write to people. We pray that you would just keep our eyes on the goal, and that is to bring more people to your kingdom. We, help, we ask that you would help us to always, always have that as our main purpose of doing anything, that more people would be able to go into your kingdom and 
So we just pray that you would keep us sensitive to the needs of people around us, that we would never stop seeing what they need and that we would be able to encourage them, that you would give us wisdom in what to say, how to speak to them so that they would also be able to get to know your amazing love and, and accept you into their lives. We pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for that prayer. Praise God. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And hopefully we'll see you back again very soon next week on Friday p.m. It's the place to be. From all of us here, God bless you. See you again soon. Bye. Bye.